It would be really great if there wasn't a freaking yappy freaking dog just... There's the culprit right there. The little bastard. In today's video, we're going to be having a look at the Cougar Boy. This is going to continue on in our series, Retro Handheld Extravaganza, and we're going to be having a look at another really, really unique console. So this, uh, just like some of the other consoles that we've had a look at, is an actual um, standalone console. It's not an emulator of the Game Boy or anything. It has its own games, which we'll, uh, we'll move on and have a look at a little bit later on. Uh, the Cougar Boy is uh, the South American release. I believe it was released in Brazil in uh, 1992. Uh, so yeah, on the back it's made by Creatronic in 1992 and uh, in Europe it was released under the name the Mega Duck um, in the Netherlands and, uh, and France I believe as well. Um, this uh, is two peripherals for something that was actually released after um, the, the, uh, the Mega Duck console. Uh, which was a thing called the Mega Duck Laptop. Now it should have a picture on the back of here somewhere. This is it here. Not called the Mega Duck Laptop, sorry, it's called the Super Junior Computer, or Learn Computer. Uh, so yeah, that's it there, and it is essentially, as you can see, um, a Mega Duck in a laptop, and it has a little keyboard, it also has a uh, the printer, which is what this is here. Um, so it's really, really cool. That's the Mega Duck logo there, it's literally a duck with a cape on, with an M. And uh, these are two peripherals. I'm in the process of trying to get one of these laptops, um, although it's it's really not easy and they don't really sell very uh, very often at all. And uh, so I'm trying to privately message a uh, seller in Germany in order to try and actually buy one. Uh, this was released by Hartung, which also released the uh, the Supervision, a version of the Supervision. They released quite a lot of consoles. The uh, the Game Master is one that they released. Uh, which was a um, which was the Systema 2000, except it was the European version. So this is the Hartung version, and Hartung also released a, uh, a Mega Duck, which was uh, really really cool. It's like a nice black. It matches the uh, the black of the the printer and actually the uh, the grey black of the uh, the Supervision as well. So it'd be really nice to try and get one of those again. They are really really rare. This is the uh, the manual from the Mega Duck. Uh, released by Hartung. As you can see there, the uh, stunning factory fold, which was done by uh, a blind person, I think. Uh, but yeah, this is it. I uh, can't read any of it unless you're, you speak uh, Dutch. Uh, so yeah, or Netherlands, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, so yeah, that's it there. Really, really cool little piece of uh, memorabilia history, I guess. it's. I bought this on eBay for a couple of quid, but anyway, that's enough waffle. So let's have a look at this console then. Um, a Game Boy is a little bit differently sized to it, as you can see. It's definitely trying to uh, to look like it, but it's a little bit thicker. They've gone for a much more kind of ergonomic looking shape, as opposed to a really square shape, considering this was only released four years afterwards. Um, but it's about the same height. Uh, it's a little bit wider. The screen's more or less the same size. Um, in fact, I believe it is actually the same size. Um, we've got our A button, our B button, our start sort, and our select button. Start button, select button, sorry. And we have a tip, what I can only describe as looking like a tic tac, like four mint tic tacs on the, uh, the surface there, which is slightly weird. The colours of the, uh, the buttons are very similar to the, uh, the Supervision that was released by Quickshot, and also Watara did a version like this as well. Um, so I don't know if, if maybe they use the same plastic there, but it looks really, really similar. In fact, the buttons might actually be the same buttons. They, they do look very, very similar, so I'm not entirely sure on that one, though. So yeah, that's it next to the Game Boy. Very similar. We've got our speaker down here. Um, on the side, we have our contrast wheel. As you can see, it's named on the screen. That was probably to save uh, mold, the, the actual mold, probably made it cheaper. Um, so yeah, we've got our contrast on the sides, just like on we do on here. On this side, we have our volume. There is also an external connector, which I do not have the cable for. Um, I, there's really, really little actually on these on, on eBay. So uh, yeah, that's it there, a little cable. Um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Game goes at the top, of course. The batteries takes four double A's, which we will put in now. 
We'll move on and have a look at the games in a minute. Um, the games are, again, very, very similar size to the uh, the ones from the, the Supervision, although not the same, and there is no um, equal compatibility there. It is, it is it's standalone games. It uh, has its own um, pin layout. So this is the games. As you can see, as I said, they look really, really similar. Uh, we've got some pins sticking out the bottom and a kind of grip on the top, and uh, yeah. A little bit thinner maybe um, probably about the same size actually um, but yeah that's the games so I've only got two games to have a look at uh, the third one that I have isn't a game it's the uh, the memory card for the the laptop and it doesn't do anything when you plug it in um, it's actually got a little battery in there as well and the the pin layout is is different as you can see so you don't get confused so the two games I have are Black Forest Tale and Snake Roy which is Possibly one of the most hilarious um, pieces of art that on a game you'll ever see in your life. And it's actually a really, really, really good game. It's it's not going to make any uh, Game Boy owners jealous or anything like that, but it's a really, really good game. Um, and uh, Ashen's made a video on the Mega Duck, and this was the game that he recommended to get. So, of course, I uh, followed Ashen's uh, and uh, tried to find it, and I did, and not too long ago, actually, and I got it for £3 and about four, four or five pound shipping or something. So uh, Black Forest Tale, I believe, is a, a rip-off of a, a NES game, but I'm not entirely sure which one it is. Before we go any further, I would like to thank someone. That guy is uh, Sobi. This is his social media, uh, his Instagram. He was actually the person who uh, sold this to me for a very, very, very reasonable price. Uh, he has an awesome collection. So if you have Instagram or Twitter, or uh, I think he even has a YouTube channel. I'll put all of the links in the description anyway. Uh, and he was the one who hooked me up with this. He has probably the most amount of handhelds or just consoles in general, actually, that I've ever seen anyone own. He's uh, trying to go for a complete set, I believe, which is, first of all, not cheap, and secondly, definitely not easy. As you can see, here's some uh, some very expensive items here. It's the uh, the Panasonic Q, if it ever loads. There you go, he's got two of them. So if you have a minute, go and check his Instagram out. It's a really, really cool guy. And again, thank you very much for uh, sending this to me. So let's have a look then. We'll have a look at Black Forest Tale, as it's not quite as amazing as, uh, as Snake Roy. I'm standing on the surface of the sun in order for actually us to uh, see the screen. Um, the speaker is dreadful and uh, this, the screen is, is very low quality, so you'll have to excuse me. Um, you think, oh my god, how is he actually going to film the screen? It looks terrible. It looks like that in, in, in person as well. It's not just uh, through the camera. Hang on a minute. Let's have a listen to that music again. It got a uh, seriously dramatic. Bloody hell. That sounds alright, doesn't it? Start. Get off. Right. This is going to be quite hard to look at. Basically, you're a little witch, and you wander around, and then you see an enemy, and you die. Okay, don't do that. Let's try that again. Jesus, that's a painfully slow death screen. And then you throw them into a wall, and they turn into a coin. You know, just how, like, every, every, everything happens, you know? Throw them into a wall, turn into a coin. Rinse and repeat. Oh, I died. Um, and, and I think that's all that really happens with that game, if I'm honest with you. Nothing else actually happens. Great artwork, terrible game, I guess you could say. Uh, so let's have a look at the, uh, the almighty Snake Roy then. So this doesn't fit very well in here, uh, which is always good. Uh, although it does have the... Uh, the seal of the seal of quality. There it is, quality control. So you know that it's uh, it's uh, seriously high quality because it was actually quality checked and the, the the check was approved because I'm holding it in my hands. Although the games don't fit, so that's uh, that's always good. So we're just gonna jam that in there and turn it on. I forgot to mention the uh, the DC in on the on the side there as well. That's the Mega Duck loading screen. They spared no expense on the soundtrack and the speaker. We're gonna start here. And we're going to admire the loading screen.
something's happening, something's happening. Uh, we've got uh, some writing going on here. Who are you? Said, said Roy the King. And I didn't see what she said. Um, what? Uh, young King, as long as you step down, you won't be hurt. Nonsense! That's what he sounds like. You will pay for your obstinate. I didn't see that word. You don't know what you are saying. Ah ha ha! You are looking for trouble. Yes. God, God. Is that a word? Bzzz. Help me, help me. I will make your life a hell. Be wandering King Roy. What? I, I can't read it through the through the viewfinder. And that was it. Snake Roy. King Roy was turned into a snake. And then from then onwards, it's just the game snake. Can't really go wrong, really, can you? It's just it's just snake, innit? Let's see if we can just do one level at least. Without our ears bleeding. I don't know about you, but sounds pretty fricking abysmal. You'll have to excuse the scratches on the screen, as you can imagine these things are quite hard to find. Ah, oh, there's one more and it's all the way on the other side. Good God! By the way, this has got super stereo sound, which is why it sounds so, so good. We're almost there. The door is open. I am determined. <sighs> and then a bomb goes off or something like that. So yeah, that's the the, uh, the Cougar Boy really. I don't really have anything to say um, other than it's just a work of art and there's nothing wrong with it at all. Honestly though, it is actually a great con console. Like it's it's just like the supervision. The games lack the uh, the hardware capabilities is perfectly fine as i did with the last one i will put all the specifications in the description as well there's one last thing to have a look at and it's a bit of a rarity i guess this is a uh, se although very 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 yellow this is a sealed mega duck game um the case is slightly cracked which might have something to do with the fact that this sent was, this was sent in uh, one sheet of paper and then taped at the top um, but yeah this is it here it's the, the French uh, Mega Duck sealed game of Vex, which is uh, apparently not a great game. That's the Mega Duck on the back there. Everything's in French. But yeah, I thought I'd give you guys a little. Uh, this was released by Videojet, which again, a very popular company that released. They seem to release a lot of failed consoles after the uh, the original manufacturers made them and uh, failed at selling them. So that's pretty much it then for this video. Let me know what you guys think of the, uh, the Cougar Boy. It's a very interesting console and I, I really, really like it. And uh, Speaking of rare, rare and interesting consoles, I have a Gamate or a Gamate, which is uh, boxed and unused, coming down from Saudi Arabia. So I'm really much looking forward to, uh, very much looking forward to getting that and doing an unboxing and having another retro handheld extravaganza. Thank you very, very much for 600 subscribers. I didn't actually get to to say that. And then uh, we've actually surpassed 600 almost, and we're on 650 something rather, which is amazing. And I uploaded a video on the. Uh, Hopefully back to it, Game Boy Color, and I gained a crap ton of subscribers and uh, a lot of views on that video. So thank you so, so much for the support, um, and I'll catch you in the next video.